In this video, I'll share one way you can make your artwork better. One way to make your artwork better is to help focus the viewer's attention. I've got four drawings in pen and ink that I want to share with you and uh, the reference photos that I used for them. And I want to talk about the, this process of how do you focus the viewer's attention on what you want them to see. When you're working with reference photos, it's easy to, to get overwhelmed. In fact, with your reference photos, when you're walking or driving and you see something that catches your eye, keep that in mind. What was it? That, was it the texture, the color, the, the way the light came across? The, there was something that caught your eye. And that's, that's what your picture is about. For example, I live in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. And in our little town, we've got a historic village. And there's a coffee shop over there. And it's across this meadow. The scene can be really dramatic in the morning light. So I've taken some pictures and I've drawn different versions of this over the years. When I wanted to draw a picture of this, I had to make a conscious decision. What do I want the viewer to focus on? What is the most important thing? And in this instance, I've got some leading lines from the trail and right where that trail goes, that is the entrance to the historic village. If I just try to draw everything, I don't know what's important. So the first question I'm asking myself is, well, what is it that caught my eye? And in this instance, it's this area where the trail leads into there, the, the mountains come together. That's the focal point of the whole thing. So in my mind, I know that I don't want to draw all of this. I want the viewer to focus their attention here. So the first thing I do is I take the photo and I convert it to black and white because for me, I'm, I'm working in pen and ink, but it helps me simplify. And also I just erase and block out the main parts. I know I'm not going to focus my attention out there. So it's easy to just remove those. I increase the contrast and I get the values where they really stand out. Here's the final illustration. And you'll notice all of the detail, all the things that are important, that's where I spend most of my time. So to improve your drawings, you want to increase the contrast. And it's not just when you're in Photoshop and you move a slider for the contrast, the main thing it's doing is it's making the darks darker and the lights lighter and sharpening the edges. But that's not the only kind of contrast. It's the contrast between any two different things. In this case, it's the contrast between the area of detail. So the things that are the most important have the most detail. And in this case, the darkest darks are right there. The highest areas of contrast are right where I want to pull your eye into where the trail leads up into some of the sheds. That's the entrance. But I had to make a conscious decision as I'm working on the drawing to not get lost in the details. If I keep drawing, and that's the easy thing to do is that's the fun part of drawing is all those little details. But if you aren't consciously thinking about what is the area of focus, what was the thing that first caught my eye when I took this reference photo, keep coming back to that and comparing to it. And when I do a drawing like this, I'll, I'll take a few days. It doesn't look like it would take that long but I'm comparing. I want to add some detail and then I need to step away. I work it and the next day after a good night's sleep, I can look at it and make that evaluation. 
okay, this is what caught my eye. This is what I want the viewer to focus on. Now, does it need more contrast? Is my eye pulled away? And it's easy to do. You get up in those trees and you can add some of that detail, but the more detail you add to those outside areas, pull away from the area of focus. So it's, it's a balancing act. If I look at it and I make that decision that, you know, I need a little bit more detail up on this mountain and I add those details, I have to balance that with more detail down in the area of where that's most important. It's always this evaluation. I've been an illustrator for 30 years, and although I'm not talking about illustrations specifically, I do want to mention one of the most famous illustrators was F.R. Gruger. He did his work at the turn of the century, early 1900s, the golden age of illustration. And this is an example of his artwork. The perspective pulls you to the focus of these three characters walking down a street. But what's fascinating about this is the same idea of contrast, the area of focus, having the most detail. If you really look at the background elements, his treatment of the background is very loose. The contrast, the darks and the lights carry a lot of weight, but the details are in those three figures. And finding that balance, if you look at the detail in the house, on the there's a car in the shadows, and, and you look at those, they're really just indicated fairly loosely. This idea of focusing the attention with the contrast in the level of detail. Here's another example. This caught my eye, the, these grapevines, and it was the way the light was coming across and just hitting at the base. And the rest of it was up in shadow, but that's what caught my eye. When you take a reference photo, what is it that you leave out? How much do you include? So the first thing that I do is convert it to black and white, like I showed you in the last one. But in this case, I didn't the contrast slider and actually went the other way. I wanted to flatten out the shapes. I didn't want the focus to be all in the vines crossing each other up in the top so much as it was down here, that focus where the light was hitting the trunks, that's what it's about. So all of my effort needs to focus on this area. And so in the finished drawing, the contrast is greatest around this area. You can always be working on a piece. And I look at it now and I, I could easily have spent more time up in the trees, but again, it's that idea that the more detail I add up in those leaves, it will pull away from what I want you to focus on. Answering that question, what do I want the viewer to be looking at? I want them to be looking at where the light is hitting the base of the trees. You know, they say that Hollywood, the best special effects are the ones that you don't know you're seeing. So it succeeds the best when the viewer is not consciously aware of what it was that you did. They'll just know that this is very satisfying. And in this example, I saw this girl walking across a park. The pose was interesting. The, the layers of clothing, the bag on the shoulder. There's a seed here for a good picture. And the rest of it came together when uh, I'm on Google Earth. I'm doing research for other projects and if you go into street view, and every once in a while I'll swing the camera over to the side of some obscure corner and this wall of foliage or a building or texture or the, you know something will be, will be interesting. But in this case I thought this is nice. I can take this girl and have her walking into the woods. That was the nugget of the idea. So I added tree trunks in the woods. As I worked on this piece, she's the, the focus 
and to really help with that in composition she's at at about the third but it's the level of contrast down at the bottom where her feet and your eye goes to that area of contrast and your eye is drawn to the figures and in adding the tree trunks I didn't want to get carried away so I wanted to suggest the forest rather than getting into the details so in this final example walking past a chair the light coming through the window that was glancing off the edge of that chair caught my eye and the pattern on the floor those two things I wanted that to be the focus the challenge of this is there's a lot going on here so there's a lot of detail and distraction and, and, and things but I want to focus on the quality of the light on the edge of the chair and the carpet so in the final illustration that's where all, all of the effort is spent and you'll notice that you can get away with minimal detail in some of the other areas. A lot of it is suggestion. So the overall message is the one thing you can do that will improve your artwork is to be aware of your intent. What was it that captured your eye and increase the level of contrast in the important areas and resist the urge to keep adding details and that's the struggle because it's that you get into the when you're drawing that's the satisfying part the shading all the that's the fun stuff <laughs> but at what cost of course I'm just using my drawings as examples and your style may vary but I think this one thing will help you improve if you can be more focused and what you want the viewer to see, your artwork will be more clear. So let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you found these ideas useful. Uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll share more resources and tutorials and inspiration about illustration and drawing. And thanks for watching.